Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Today we're going to talk about John Penn. Of course, your first question is, which John Penn? There were several. Uh, the most famous one is not who we're talking about today, and that's the John Penn that signed the Declaration of Independence and Articles of Confederation. Today we're going to talk about John Penn, who was a governor of Pennsylvania on the eve of revolution. Now, I stuttered there because I almost called him a royal governor, but he was not a royal governor. The colonies were founded at different times and for different reasons. Many of them were founded by the king, or at least by parliament, and the governors were appointed by the king as royal governors. Pennsylvania is a strange case because it was founded by William Penn, and Pennsylvania, of course, is named, I think, technically after his father, um, so the Penn family, and... Zylvania means woods. I can hear Transylvania is crossing the woods. Crossing, or woods to cross, or I don't know. I don't speak Transylvania. But Pennsylvania is Penn's woods, basically. Um, now, John Penn, our subject today, was the gra a grandson of William Penn who founded Pennsylvania. And so he inherited, technically, uh, one quarter of Pennsylvania. He had another cousin whose name was also John Penn, although that, bo that man's name was John Penn of Stoke, and he was significantly younger. Um, and that man, that boy, would be a man who would inherit uh, three quarters of Pennsylvania. So as a proprietorship, Pennsylvania was technically owned by one family. There were people there who owned private property, but all of the people who owned any property, that property initially was sold to someone by the proprietors of Pennsylvania, and as the proprietors, they were in charge and could run the colony. So John Penn is his his uncle Thomas is the one who was in charge when he came when John came of age, and he was sent first time he went to America. He met up with Benjamin Franklin, and went with Benjamin Franklin and several other future important players in the Revolution uh, at the Albany Conference of seventeen. Uh, 1754, and that was the first time, it was on the eve of the French and Indian War, and they were meeting to talk about the common defense of the colonies. How can we work together? It, and it's interesting, it's, it, you know, Ben Franklin was an important, made, the, made this event happen, and it was really the first time the colonies even talked about working together, because they were all colonies. They just called Britain when they needed anything. And this seemed to be more important. And as a 25, 26-year-old, John Penn really learned how the colonies worked, not only how Pennsylvania worked, but how they interacted with each other, at least between the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Um, and, yeah, I will have to do another video on the Albany Conference, because there were several important, I mean, uh, you know, not just Benjamin Franklin, but you have, like, William Samuel, Samuel Johnson of Connecticut, who would end up at the Constitutional Convention, 30 plus years later, um, uh, you have uh, uh, Thomas Hutchinson, who would be the governor of Massachusetts when the war starts to, just before the war brews for like uh, Boston Massacre and all that jazz. He's the one that they're complaining about. So, like, you have both sides working together, for, you know, 20 years before revolution begins. Um, so, John Penn got a good perspective, and he, he would go back to London for a little while and then come back to Pennsylvania and be appointed governor because his family owned the colony and they said, you get to be governor. Now, like, John seems like he was a lot of fun. He liked to go out all drinking. Apparently he had some kind of musician friend whose house he would stay at till all hours of the night. Um, and it's interesting because as the revolution breaks out, John Penn kind of sits back and doesn't say anything you know, most of the colonial and, and royal governors chose a side right away. Most of them chose Britain, um, except notably John Trumbull in Connecticut, who said, Patriots. Go Patriots. Uh, that's John Trumbull from Connecticut, not me as a football fan in modern society. <laughs> that sounded, sounded like I support a football team. I definitely do not. But if you're a Patriots fan, thank you for watching. Anyway... Um, so John's just kind of hanging out, watching things go, and then, seven, you know, 1776 rolls around, they declare independence, and he's still kind of sitting back, 
technically, you know, every state wrote, are there, now that they're states instead of colonies, they wrote their own constitution. Uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania did a lot of experimental things, which I will also have to make a video about. But um, instead of electing a new governor, they had a, a supreme executive council because they didn't want to put all that power in the hands of one man. We would realize this was very difficult because decisions were hard to make when there wasn't just one person making them. Um, and everyone else either supporting or complaining about them. So he kind of gets replaced, but he's still there. <laughs> like, it's kind of hanging around. And then in 1777, when uh, General Howe is leading his troops into Philadelphia and the Patriots leave, he still kind of hangs around. John Penn seems to have been basically crossing his fingers that either Britain would just win this war already or they'd come to some agreement and things would cool off and he could get back to running this colony that he owns, one quarter of, at least. Um, as Britain's coming in, the Patriots say, hey, before we leave, why don't we take this guy with us? And they took him and they brought him to Jersey and they, uh, New Jersey, not the ship, Jersey. Brought him to New Jersey and kept him on house arrest he seems to be treated pretty nicely because once British leave and the Patriots come back into Philadelphia, they just bring him back <laughs> and he gets to hang out again. Um, and then he doesn't, he just lives there. And then the war ends and they start a new country. And what's really super interesting about John Penn is he petitioned Pennsylvania to get compensated for the property that was taken from him. Because once the revolution started, independence declared, a new constitution written, a new government for Pennsylvania, um, most of the colonies took property from loyalists. And said, you know, get out of here. But I, he must have had a pretty good relationship with many of the revolutionaries because of all the people, you would think they would just take their property and say, get out of here. They did it for thousands of regular, ordinary people. But John Penn, who used to, you know, own the colony, <laughs> like, they were, they just basically said, okay, we'll give you some compensation. Not nearly what his property was worth. He owned hundreds of thousands of acres that were taken from him. But they gave him uh, several thousand, hundred thousand pounds. I'm not... I'm not really sure on how to translate into mo that into modern dollars. It's tricky. Although there is uh, the AMREV podcast, if you have a chance to listen to that. Uh, I've sh I should put it in the link in the description to that. Because he has one where uh, the gentleman on there breaks down, uh, Michael Troy, breaks down the uh, how coinage worked as compared to now. And it's brilliant. Um, but I digress. Basically, they, to sum up, one of the owners of Pennsylvania goes to Pennsylvania, his governor, the war happens, they put him on house arrest, but then let him go, and then they say, he's like, hey, you owe me money, and they're like, oh, okay, here. And then that's pretty much it. He wanted more money, so he actually went to London again and petitioned Parliament for more compensation, and they put him on basically a salary. And then he came back to Pennsylvania and lived quietly in his mansion after having been paid by both the revolutionaries and Great Britain for his losses. So, I'm going to end with that. Let that rattle around in here for a minute, because it is one of the most far-fetched stories of the revolution that I honestly don't know how it took me. I just, I wrote an article about it. I published an article about it today. I just read about it for the first time earlier this week. I don't know how this escaped my, this eluded my attention for so long, but apparently it had. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'll see you tomorrow. Please hit like and subscribe. My name is Jason. Thank you for watching Founder of the Day.